All right, welcome to today's video. And today's topic is the third and final installment of the mini series for the Hemi E-Body convertibles that I filmed with my friend Wade Ogle. Today's video, we go over the history of the 1970 Hemi Cuda convertible, also known as the Bass Boat Hemi Cuda. I hope you enjoy this video as much as I did filming it sitting down with Wade. Go ahead and enjoy. Now the last one is your most recent one, which I had the pleasure of seeing it being delivered to you at you Ohlone did. College. <laughs> and it was quite the treat to, because we were celebrating an anniversary event for, 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 for the Mopar car show, Club. for the Mopar Alley Club. And 25th, I believe. I believe it was the 25th. Yeah. And you were kind enough to bring all the cars out to showcase at once and this one had just finished the restoration and was the, it was the first time you had seen it as well no, i had actually or? driven it prior to re restoration okay but it was the first time after the restoration correct okay yeah so the first time and it had been returned back to its native uh, purple and native configuration mm -hmm. but yeah that, that was that was first time i had made eyes on it <laughs> I, and we told you then, but thank you again, of course, for bringing the cars out because everybody just loved to be able to see so many of these rare, amazing cars in one spot at one time. It was truly a historic event. Well, and it was a it was a group event too. It, it wasn't just me bringing these cars out. We recruited a bunch of helpers. I mean, it was a, it's it's true. a good it was half a, hour drive. It was. And just getting the cars all road worthy. I mean, cars like these, unfortunately, just don't get driven that often. And it can be persnickety being fired up the first time after being idle for a while. I think we experienced that earlier today. A little bit. <laughs> Not too bad, but there was, there was a little bit of temperament. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, getting them all roadworthy in the, in the several weeks leading up to that event mm -hmm. and getting them down there. I think you, you drove what, one I of the I did the Charger. The Charger, I yeah. Drove it down that so, yeah, it was, it was nice to be able to set up, my, but the reception was really wonderful. And, yeah, it was really, really nice. Now, this purple convertible has an interesting history to it as well. It, it wasn't always purple. It wasn't always purple. Uh, first four years of its life, it was purple, including, you know, an original production. Mm -hmm. Breakdown on these. Uh, so in, this is 1970. Mm -hmm. So 70 versus 71, uh, easily distinguishable by the quad headlights versus the dual headlights. Quad being the one year only feature in 71. 18 total of these. Wow. So a lot of them. <laughs> It compares to the 12, <laughs> sure. Uh, a lot of them. The ratio, uh, actually, of CUDAs uh, for four speeds and automatics mm -hmm. ended up being the same ratio for both years. So uh, mm -hmm. with uh, six sticks and 12 automatics. So not a lot of stick shift cars, no. which this is this is one of those. Had a very interesting early life. It was purchased in Iowa, uh, sold new in Iowa, and ran around town there. Very early on, when the car was about a year and a half old, uh, the, 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 there's paperwork, uh, uh, I don't know this fellow, but the poor guy could not, he was second owner or perhaps third at that time, but he could not afford the payments on it. Oh no. $49. $49 he had lien on it and could not make the payments and the car got repossessed oh, and then no. sold it publicly. Oh no. Perhaps the only <laughs> such car. I mean, that is talk about a drop. That is a yeah. Yeah. So a year and a half into its life, and it's worth forty nine bucks. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it was quickly sold. Then around five hundred dollars went through that first owner fairly quickly. But then next owner did what was very common to do mm -hmm. in the mid seventies, which was turn it into a seventies show car. Mm -hmm. And what's better on a 70 show car than flames and 
weird psychedelic uh, <laughs> striping and swirls and metal flake. Just tons of metal flake. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the car weighed an extra 200 pounds of metal <laughs> flake, but, but it had a lot of metal flake. Um, and that's the way it, it really survived. Mm -hmm. And and to be honest, uh, well, I, I have since restored it. Mm -hmm. I, I chose to keep various pieces of it, the mm -hmm. shaker bubble, the grill, the deck lid, uh, in remembrance of this era. Mm -hmm. I, I can't say it was that beautiful of a right. job. And uh, and the, the the painter who painted it, you know, I did. I, I tend to. Uh, I really I really like to do the research mm -hmm. on my vehicles and find out old owner history. There's always a wealth of just stories and information and oftentimes right. pictures and stuff that come with it. So I have several such stories with this car. But I did speak with the painter who painted it. It was the first custom he had ever done. Oh, wow. And I told him that I was considering to paint it back to its original purple and but keeping this, this honoring with these, these specific pieces. Mm -hmm. And he gave me the full blessing. He said, you know, okay. he, he really was quite frank. He, he, he thought that the car just did not come out exactly the way that he thought <laughs> he envisioned it. <laughs> but anyway, it, best part about it to that at that decade mm -hmm. from you know being purchased new, generally through the early 80s, is always the most difficult decade for all these muscle cars. And right. all, that's the era where they're just used cars and yep. they get used and they get abused and mm -hmm. they deteriorate. This particular car, at that crucial moment in time when it could have been just blown up to death, mm -hmm. was converted to this show car and this great paint. And although it was still driven and, and regularly used, uh, it, that same paint was on that car all the way up until 2007 wow. when I restored it. So that preserved this car, and this car is is really one of the best original mm -hmm. body cars. Amazing. That paint just saved this car from from having the, the same life that, uh, that that took a lot of the others of its peers. So uh, some really really good, great condition. That's incredible. Yeah, I know there's a lot of controversy about this car online because of. The fact that you went through and restored it back to the way it came off the assembly line, which personally I prefer it this way. Okay. Um, but it's interesting to hear that the, the painter who did the original work, that you were in contact with them and they were okay with it as <laughs> yeah. well. Because um, I know, I, I even have uh, some friends mind like, oh, I should have left it the way it was. I'm like, yeah, but this just looks so <laughs> right. <laughs> it's an interesting thing. And, and really I debated about it for, for, for quite some time. Obviously, it cost me more money mm -hmm. to just if you put it in that term, it cost me right. more money to restore it than to just leave it alone. Mm -hmm. If this car had been a custom car that had got some accolades mm -hmm. from that, but it wasn't, it was just something somebody did. Right. Uh, uh, if this car was a 318 mm -hmm. powered car that that really its claim to fame was its 70s custom paint job, then right. absolutely I would have. This car is one of the six four-speed Hemi Cuda convertibles. Mm -hmm. It is just all original. Drivetrain, all the paperwork, all original sheet metal. It's, and you know, it's a, it's a fantastic color of plum crazy purple. Mm -hmm. So why shouldn't it be purple? Right. Absolutely. So, uh, so, and, and then the, what sealed the deal, not only the, the, the painter gave me his blessing, but uh, subjectively, mm -hmm. I, I, I can't say that it was that beautiful of a, of a 70s country. That era, you know, to this day, there are, there are people that really, really appreciate the 70s mm -hmm. cars, and they're interesting to look at. You can mm -hmm. look in a parking lot and you, they, but do you actually want to own one? I, yeah. there, there are people that appreciate them from afar. Yes. But most of those people appreciate them from afar. Nearly everybody, they don't have one in their garage. Absolutely. It's easy to appreciate what somebody else yes. should be doing with their car. <laughs> <laughs> but when you own it, that's a different story. So I felt the best to honor it. Shaker bubble with the flames, mm -hmm. 
the deck lid, the, and I built this display back mm -hmm. there, and, I, and I, I keep those, and I have these, you know, of course, all this picture book where I have all the pictures of it. I took all the measurements of all the custom. It was repainted once. If you want to repaint it again, you know, long after I'm gone, yeah. uh, <laughs> more power to you. you can, it, it was repainted once. But I'm a purist. Mm -hmm. That's the way, you know, my, my cars are. Yeah. And uh, while I'll do some, some factory embellishments here and there uh, to personal touches, uh, again, kind of no harm, no foul, I can always right. change. I, I chose that the, that this car deserved to be restored back to its day one configuration, being with the significance that it holds. Yeah, I, I personally agree. I think that's the, the right choice. The car came out absolutely gorgeous. It, it looks amazing. Uh, I, I don't doubt it was a good looking car to, to some when it first came out in the 70s in that paint. <laughs> um, but like you said, they look great from afar. Um, same thing for me for low riders. I'm, when I go to the SEMA show and I see them, I can appreciate the work. I respect the work. I would never want to own one. I would much prefer them put back to the stock configuration, but I can appreciate the artwork, but it's not something I would like to have in my garage. I have one other interesting story, oh, story to absolutely. share about this car. Yes. I might have mentioned it to you, I'm not sure, but uh, had a little mishap during the restoration process. Oh, yes. This was in 2000, late 2007. Mm -hmm. I had purchased the car. And at the time, there was this company, now defunct, but a company called Aloha Automotive. Mm -hmm. And they were really uh, kind of the, the, the name of the game at the time. They had a big shop in Wisconsin, and they, they were um, they were the go-to guys for these big dog cars. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of expertise. So I made arrangements. Uh, they had done some work, including repainting the red car, oh, and that went that went well. I, I, anyway, I was I, uh, there were some areas that I thought they could have done a little bit better, but mm -hmm. I was working with them, and overall, you know, I appreciated appreciated their work. Mm -hmm. their, I think their paint and body work was really just stellar. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I could nitpick on some of the, the the small specific features, but their paint and body work was really really spectacular. So I organized with them when I was buying this car that I would send that to them and mm -hmm. uh, and have them do the restoration. With a uh, substantial upfront payment that, in all honesty, I, I volunteered. Mm -hmm. So, but I figured I'm going to pay this anyway. Um, he was in the middle of, the owner at the time was in the middle of some uh, other deals and stated that he, had, he could use some money for, for some other ventures. And while I didn't want to, in, invest in any of those, I thought, you know, prepaying a very significant portion, what harm could it mm -hmm. Sent the car to them. They immediately began disassembling the car. That time, the owner, he started to become less and less available. Their son was really taking over the more day-to-day -day efforts. Mm -hmm. well, he was fairly young, in his early 20s. Yeah. So I just started communicating more and more with the son and less mm -hmm. with the, the dad. November, December, I'm getting invoices, there's work on it, but most of it is disassembly work. And come early January, I heard a rumor, in fact, from the previous owner of this car that I bought it from, that this company, Aloha, is going out of business. Oh, no. That's what I said. <laughs> Oh, no. wait, what? I, I've been communicating with these yeah. folks, or, or at least you know, the son, and uh, I, there was no indication. Yeah. And so I made a phone call, mm -hmm. and I talked to the son, and, and I understand that he was in a difficult predicament, mm -hmm. but he more or less said, yeah, I don't know how we're going to be open by the end of the week. Oh, no. I, uh, I uh, uh, what? <laughs> and so I had delivered them a fully complete, very original, granted repainted, but very original car mm -hmm. in running driving condition yep. that was now disassembled in as many pieces as you could possibly disassemble oh. one of these cars. Oh. And they're going out of business imminently and as a bonus, they have a huge amount of my money that I that I have prepaid. I made 
flight plans immediately. Of course. And I, I flew out there and I saw what was going on. They, that was the first time I had been to that shop. Mm -hmm. Big shop, very nice. Nothing in sight. Not a single project was going. The only one that was really moving at all was mine that had already essentially been paid for. Yeah. Tim Wellborn, mm -hmm. a, a very, very well-known and renowned uh, uh, Mopar collector yep. and car, muscle car collector, he had a couple cars there, but they were essentially complete. Mm -hmm. and he was just scheduling to pick them up. And I had known Tim, we had interacted several times, you know, uh, but, uh, but I didn't know until I was going there that, that he had some cars there. Right. So when I, I showed up and I saw what was going on, I thought, oh my gosh, I need to get my stuff out of here. Mm -hmm. I said, so what about all the money that I mm -hmm. have? It's gone. Oh. Completely gone. Oh. Uh, I hired a legal team to look into it. This little shop in Wisconsin had, I guess, uh, affiliated themselves with a local bank and they thought he this was a hometown hero. They had uh, loaned this shop and this business owner roughly three million dollars wow. towards the development of this of this this restoration shop yeah. and property in in the middle of nowhere Wisconsin wow. and it was not worth anywhere near that right so unfortunately my ability to recover any of these funds so setting that aside Really, the primary focus at the time was to get my car mm -hmm. the heck out of there. Absolutely. So I spent, and this is where my hands-on experience mm -hmm. of working on these cars before came in handy. I bolted together overnight, frankly, with the help of the sun. We bolted together as many pieces on that car overnight to, it was rollable and functional. Wow. I mean, it was, there, everything was put together by one bolt every right. But it, that was really the only way to take inventory that right. everything was there. I had coordinated uh, with Tim Wellborn mm -hmm. that uh, that I had a dedicated tractor trailer. Mm -hmm. Remember, I had had two days warning. Right. With it, so <laughs> I had a tractor trailer coming the next day, right before there was a big uh, snowstorm oh, scheduled yeah. to come in and blanket the whole area. <laughs> and so I don't care. And and I was going to take. Tim's two cars yeah. and and my car and all the parts and pieces out of there. Yeah. Anyway, the next day the trailer showed up. It all went on there. Got out literally right before the storm. And by the end of the week, Aloha was closed. Wow. Unreal. It is absolutely unreal. Unreal. So fortunately, you know the car is the the number one out of it mm -hmm. all, and and it survived unscathed. And, <laughs> and it it just. Uh, it was really reluctant, apparently, to get to shed its yeah. colorful <laughs> exterior and said, I need to hold on to this a little longer. <laughs> so um, the best outcome, though, is that Tim Wellborn was a very, very steady customer of Roger Gibson, mm -hmm. who was world-renowned for he restoring is. these Mopars to yep. perfection. And and while I would have loved to originally have gone to Roger, mm -hmm. he, he generally had a two to three year backlog. Yeah. It was just a small shop, but he is meticulous. Absolutely. And, and, and really just, just does the best job. Yes. So Tim, who had been a steady customer of his, uh, we, we, we spoke and he knew you know, that, that I now had this car that was in a million <laughs> pieces and I, I wanted it restored. And he was next in line for Roger Gibson Restaurant, he had the next slot available. Wow. And said, wait, I, I really, mean a lot to me, if you have the spot, please take my spot. That's amazing. And I delivered, had the car delivered straight from Aloha to Roger's place. And the next available time, Roger restored it and just did a brilliant job. I was, in the end, the car came out far better than it, it could have ever wow. done, you know, through, for my original plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, the very first day that I saw it completed then was that day at the, at the car know. show when it wow. just got delivered fresh from Roger's handiwork over over the past year. And, uh, and yeah, it was, it, was, it was quite a day. Very cool, very cool. Quite the story. <laughs> that is, I could not imagine your nerves though during that time trying to, to get out there, save the car. And, 
save the car and, and survive the weather and, sur <laughs> and uh, yeah, survive my nerves. It was, uh, yeah, not something I would wish to ever do again. Right. But, uh, you know, stuff happens mm -hmm. and uh, you just got to deal with it and, and, and move on with life. Mm -hmm. If you're, you're in this car hobby long enough, <laughs> something, something. With, with some speed bump will occur it's and, going to. Uh, yeah and so mm -hmm. if that's as bad as it gets for me that's not too bad that's not too bad the car is here it looks amazing no thank you no. thank you again wade for all of your time sharing stories with us about these cars uh i look forward uh to doing more of these videos with you in the future because I mean, you have so many more cars with so much more history to discuss. I'd love to, John. We are yeah. just running out of time in light today. <laughs> light is, yeah, <laughs> we're definitely a work. And uh, yeah, we're, we uh, would love to have you back. That would be fantastic. Well, thank you. And thanks everybody for tuning in. And until next time, if you want to be kept up to date with all the future videos, hit that subscribe button. And if you like today's video, don't forget, hit that like button, give us that thumbs up. And uh, we will see you at the next video.